with Stone Cold E.T. Rides a bicycle, I ride him long, I ride him hard, just like a Texas rattlesnake. When he's done whooping Vince McMahon's ass, give me a, oh, hell yeah. What'd you say, E.T.? What? What'd you say, E.T.? What? I said I want to roll two cheeseburgers, and that's the bottom line. You know, I got to say, I got to say that was one of the worst months, the worst January vacations I have ever taken. After covering this god-awful fucking game for two months, I, I, I look forward to January and just kind of relaxing, get a little R&R &R in. Nah, nah, man. I got COVID, my heater broke in the dead of winter. Uh, stuff just kept breaking in general, and, and, but whatever, dude, whatever. I, I'm, I'm back. I got a few vacation days at least. I played some Lethal Company with some friends. I had a great time doing that, so it's not all bad. Now let's get back into the swing of things and cover what's actually changed on Call of Duty. Oh, oh wait. Oh wait. Absolutely fucking nothing has changed! Let's roll the sponsor footage and I'll cover it when I'm done. Let me talk to you. Today's sponsor is a game I play quite a bit, and every time I do, it makes me just want to say, Yeah! Yeah! Because it's Raid Shadow Legends. Winter is here, it is cold outside, but it's also cold in Raid Shadow Legends because we have some new icy cold champions like Sir Nicholas here. And my favorite feature of him has to be his aura skill, which increases all allies HP by 33% to help with survivability. I also really like Whirlin Frost King. As a one-two punch with Sir Nicholas, he can attack all enemies with his second skill and places important debuffs such as decrease crit damage and decrease accuracy on the enemy. The Cursed City is one of Raid's biggest new features since the Doom Tower with 100 stages to complete. While you work your way through the Cursed City, you can complete various quests and even get your hands on a mythical champion. You can also use the promo code RAIDXMAS before January ends to score exclusive in-game prizes. But there's even more. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. If you're still not sold, you can find me under the clan tag here join my clan and we'll be legends together all right guys welcome back to the video truth be told i was gonna come back whenever they talked about matchmaking you know when they announced they were going to discuss it openly with the community but they kind of beat around the bush and gave us vague time frames and whatnot like they said in the coming weeks after season one they would be talking about matchmaking this is the only thing i care about and i think that's evidenced by the fact that it's it's the january downfall for call of duty Every single goddamn year, this happens. The game comes out, people play it for two months, and then that's it. But there was a little bit of hope. There was a little bit of hope. With Microsoft taking over and Bobby Kotick gone, people thought that maybe some things would change. But here we are. It's January 25th, 2024. The only thing Call of Duty has done is release a cringy duck skin for the same price as a full-fledged game in PAL World, which is taking uh, Steam by storm, by the way, taking the gaming world by storm. Whether you love it, whether you hate it, you can call it a ripoff, you can call it whatever. It's taking an idea that's tired and garbage and, 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 and making it good. I predicted this would happen. Did I not? In the comments section below, tell me when I'm telling lies here. I predicted this would happen. I said that gamers are going to get sick of this AAA garbage and then take making the game into their own hands and release something good. And now we have Power World, which has actually outsold the last Pokemon game. I think it was Arceus Legends. And look, I don't talk about it here, but if you guys have followed me for a while, I've been playing Pokemon. I actually made a secondary channel based on Pokemon, like competitive Pokemon or whatever. And that took off quite a bit until I realized that the games just continued to release crap and, and suck ass and it was up to Smogan who are also morons um, to, to balance out things and it's just it's a mess like I could not stick with it I had a second channel that I built from the ground up you know not Call of Duty related it was a relative success back in the day but I, I just abandoned it because 
Pokemon sucks. I mean, it's made for like retarded people and slow children. Uh, the games are so easy, I could roll my face across my Nintendo Switch and probably beat the game. It's just, it, it, the potential is there, but they don't care. You know, it's just, they don't care. They want to sell their games to just morons and, and trendy people and, oh, I'm a gamer girl types. Uh, you know, whatever, dude. People got sick of it, now we have Power World. I predicted that would happen, and it was about to happen again with SM2 until that got shut down, but I, I, I don't know, man. It remains to be seen if X Defiant or some other shooter can come along and really take the Call of Duty player base completely away. I mean, they're doing a good enough job destroying it themselves, Activision and the devs are, I mean, but, you know. But anyway, yeah, there was this big hope that things would change. There was a big, big hope that things would be different. I saw today that they're continuing with the yearly release cycle, so that's not going to change. Uh, it's January 25th, nearly two months. I think we're like five, six, seven days shy of it being two months since we got that whole, like, in the coming weeks after season one, we'll talk about matchmaking garbage, which I'm just, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I truly think that was a lie. We'll never hear anything from it again. I think that was a lie to get people to buy the game for Christmas. They released that statement, I do believe, at the start of December. You know, like, it's it's literally just a, another lie that is going to be told to sucker people in to buy the game. I, I don't think we'll ever hear anything about it. It's It's been way too long at this point. I, I gave them until the halfway point of the season, with season one reloaded. They're just not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. They actually had the gall to release a statement like uh, just in the last week, I think it was, after Season 1 Reloaded even, this big blog post talking about how, like, uh, you know, they've cracked down on in-game toxicity, the the automated voice chat bot that just um, listens into your conversations has banned, like, a ton of people or something like that or gave them warnings or whatever and now no one talks in the lobbies because you know if they're if their cuban mom says like a racial slur in the background while she's vacuuming then god knows what's going to happen to your account with five hundred dollars worth of stupid virgin skins you've bought you know you're going to get banned and probably never be able to talk to your friends or anyone in the game again or something like that it's a mess you know, th this is such a, a non-problem. This is such a non-issue. Literally, if someone's saying something you don't like in this fucking game, just mute them. Just mute them and block them. Done. What a non-problem, what a non-issue to brag about. Meanwhile, there are cheaters galore. Ranked play is impossible to the point where pro players are not playing on PC anymore and are just playing on Xbox and, and PlayStation and whatnot just to avoid cheaters. I think Sony actually released a Cronus Zen like block. If you try to use it, it won't work anymore. So I, from what I understand, Xbox and PlayStation know that this particular device is cancer to FPS in general. Me, I, I just bought like a $2,000 PC, you know? Like, I, I really would like to use it. I mean, I'm not gonna play Call of Duty in general, but I would like to use it on FPSs, but there are just so many cheaters in the FPS space right now it's impossible. Like, Ranked Play just got released or whatever. I actually saw AI Cronus Zen script bots in Ranked Play. And a simple Google search would show that whether it's Activision or a player, that bots are in the game. And I don't know, man. If I played Ranked Play and my teammate was like an AI script bot, I'd probably just never play an online competitive FPS again. I'm already to the point where I'm not playing them. The entire break I had, you know what I did? I played Lethal Company with friends. I didn't get a chance to play Lethal Company when it was kind of new and Call of Duty was around because I was so busy covering that awful game for YouTube. You know, like, I'm so busy covering Modern Warfare 3 pretty much every single day from November till December. I missed, like, the, the prime of, of Lethal Company. Granted, I did get into it in January. I've got about, I think, 30, 40 hours into it. I've had a blast. I've got my $10 worth and more it is just a game that's unique and it's not trying to be anything crazy and it's good and people like it and uh now power world's out again it's just kind of taking that pokemon formula and making it for people that don't have the iq of a jar of mayonnaise it's it's actually brilliant how how great indie gaming is and i for one i haven't played power world yet and again i might be a while before i get to it because i'm just covering Modern Warfare 3 again this year. 
It's it's so dead though. I feel like I could just branch off and it doesn't matter. Um, I, I mentioned this on Twitter. If you guys follow me on Twitter, that. All the people that have just been positive for the sake of being positive, all the people that have been invited out to Call of Duty events and have just sat on their hands and were just a beacon of positivity are going to suffer this year. Call of Duty interest on YouTube, on Twitch, it's pretty much at an all-time low. As if the 40% drop in sales wasn't bad enough. Like, this is worse than Vanguard this year. Vanguard, at the very least, was so, like, bad, it was almost fun to cover. You know what I mean? Now we're in this stage where we just have, like, this poor man's patch, which still has tons of issues and bugs and problems, of Modern Warfare 2 releasing. And, like, it, the fatigue is real. Modern Warfare 3 is one of the better Call of Duties we've gotten in the past couple of years, but, like, it doesn't need to exist. It could have just been a title update to Modern Warfare 2. And man, the disinterest this year in particular is going to be legendary, guys. We are going to see numbers so low, we might actually see people who are dedicated Call of Duty channels switch gears. They, they might actually switch games. I'm not kidding. Anyway, guys, I'm out of time. Uh, as of making this video, no matchmaking talk. I don't think we'll ever get it. If we do... I mean, too little, too late. Like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I'll see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace. Do some parting advice.